You want to hear? You want to see it? You want to see it? I want to see it. Ready? All right, last one. Three, two, one. and it's named after Nikola Tesla. He was a Serbian scientist who really wanted to provide free wireless electricity to the people that were living in the cities that he was, he was in. This is the instrument that he ended up coming up with. So what you have here is a concoction of two different types of coils. You've got the primary green coil at the bottom, and you've got the secondary copper coil that goes up the entire body of the Tesla coil itself. Now, this instrument is plugged into the wall the same way any, any electrical appliance would be plugged into a wall today. It pulls about 120 volts of electricity out of the wall socket, just the same way your, tel your cell phone charger or a light bulb would do. But the interesting thing is, when that electricity leaves the Tesla coil from the very top, from that bulb up there, it's no longer 120 volts. It's changed its voltage. It's now 500,000 volts. Wow. That's a lot of volts. <laughs> Now, you see the lightning, and that's what, uh, one way of proving that there's electricity coming out of the Tesla coil, but another interesting fact is there's an invisible electric field. That's very convenient, because we, as a people today, have a lot of dependency on electrical appliances. But just don't take my word for it. Question me. Make sure that I'm actually telling you the truth and some facts. And here's how you know. If you look on the other side of the display, there's a sign that says Tesla coil. The sign itself is composed of individual glass tubes, like a regular light bulb, but the interesting thing is they are not plugged into a wall socket the way a light bulb would be at home. But because they are actually filled with elemental gases inside of these tubes, when the invisible electric field crosses through these tubes, they interact with the gases inside, and as a result of that interaction, the gases get excited and they emit light. So you can take a look at that and see that the, this is exactly what I was like telling you about. I'll fire it up a few more times later on. So as I mentioned, Nikola Tesla wanted to provide free wireless electricity to everybody, right? That sounds like a great idea, doesn't it? I don't want to pay for electricity. But you know what? The electrical companies didn't really like that idea because how are they going to sit there and quantify the amount of electricity you're using every day and then charge you for it? That's how they make money and if they can't tell you, oh, you use this much, pay me, they're, they're not happy. So, that was one of the biggest downsides to actually having Tesla coils as our source of electricity as Nikola Tesla originally wanted. The other one was simply this. This one here is five or six feet tall, right? Maybe seven on a good day and it makes a decent amount of noise. I can barely talk to the person in front of me. If that's operating right next to me, it's only five or six feet away from me and I can barely talk to the people in front of me when that's operating. So let's think about this. This was five or six feet tall, right, like I said. If we depended on Tesla coils as our source of electricity, guess how tall they would need to be? 200 feet tall at least. And you would need one on every block in the city. So you would have one in your backyard. The next block over, there would be another 200 foot tall one. Block over from that, another 200 foot tall Tesla coil. But why do you need so many? Well, let's think about it. If you're closer to the Tesla coil, you get more of that electrical output. The further away you get from it, the weaker that electricity is gonna be and you're not gonna be able to use your phone anymore because guess what, your phone is an electrical appliance, isn't it? But if you're having trouble visualizing that, think of it this way. When you're standing right next to a bonfire, you feel the heat. Right? Step back 50 feet, do you still feel the heat anymore? No. Step back even further, can you feel the heat anymore? No. So the further away you get from the source, the weaker that signal is going to be. That's the reason why the Tesla coil would, would have needed to be on every block in the city if we were depending on them as our source of electricity. So let's take a look. Questions? Wouldn't the uh, yes. electromagnetic fields created by giant Tesla coils everywhere make radio communication 
pretty difficult. Difficult. Yeah. Because <laughs> you would have electromagnetic bombs. field. Yeah. And everything else. Exactly. So here, actually, we have. Well, here we have it. The Faraday cage, cage which is very, very helpful, because the Faraday cage is actually the thing that's blocking us from literally interacting with the electric field that's coming out of the Tesla coil. So the way that that does this is it's copper. It's made out of copper. When the electric field is coming out of the Tesla coil, once it reaches the copper, it immediately grounds that electric field and it can't pass through anymore. Now the reason we had to install this Faraday cage here was because when we moved the Tesla coil from its original spot, which was on the other side of this hall, and we brought it over here back in 2006, right after we finished the renovations, we realized that it's not very ideal of a spot. The computers that run the planetarium show are right here, behind this wall. So if you don't have a Faraday cage, and you have the Tesla coil operating, and you have a planetarium show going on, you have some sort of a show you didn't really plan for, because the computer's like, oh, wait, 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 I'm getting a new signal, I gotta do something else, okay, here's a pink screen. That doesn't really work. That's not what the planetarium shows were for. So to avoid that sort of interaction between the electric fields coming out of the Tesla coil and the computers back here, we installed the uh, Faraday cage. And in addition to that, everybody nowadays has a cell phone in their hand, has a camera, people have pacemakers. <laughs> Come on. Safety before anything else, right? So with all that said and done, if there are any other questions, I'll be glad to answer them. How much current uh, does it draw to the wall to run the Tesla coil this size? In amps? Yeah. Or watts. I know in volts it's 120, 100, 120 volts. How much do you know the wattage? Wattage? I don't know the wattage. So and I can't well, right. yeah, I, right. I can't do the yeah, conversions yeah, in my head right now. I wish I could. To figure out the wattage. Well yeah, she knew the amperage though, but we know the voltage, we could have figured out the amperage. Yeah. Alright. You wanna hear it? you wanna see it? You wanna see it? I wanna see it. Ready? Alright, last one. Three, two, one.